Ayan. So, hello again. I am uh, Mary Angeli Escobacuan. And uh, this is, once again, a continuation to our previous topic, which was uh, the Gagne's Conditions of Learning. Okay, so again, sa conditions of learning ni Gagne, there are nine events and there are also five uh, categories of learning. So again, the importance of uh, the conditions of learning of Gagne is to help us or to assist us teachers in designing instructions when we are um, planning for our lessons. Okay, so now, let's now look at the... Uh, idea naman of Osubel. Yeah. So allow me to share my screen. Yeah. Let's just go back to, to the title. So from Gagne's Conditions of Learning, this is now Osubel's Meaningful or Verbal Learning. Or sometimes they call it Subsumption Theory. Okay, so, meaningful verbal learning. Yeah. Okay, so just a bit information about David Paul Osubel. He was born in 1918 and grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, and he attended University of Pennsylvania, majoring in psychology of, of for pre-medicine. He also earned a PhD in developmental psychology from Columbia University, and his most significant contribution was on the development of um advanced organizer. Kasi yun yung focus ng research. Actually, um, yung uh, mga uh, psychologists ng uh, panahon nila, okay? when uh, me many educational psych psychology theories are you know are uh, widespread maraming mga critics about about it sabi ni Osobel I'm not gonna critic it but instead I'm going to improve it so sabi kasi nila puro na lang daw uh, presentational yung way ng pagtuturo ng teacher o sa ngayon naman gawin naman natin mas interesting sabi ni David Paul Osobel so, um, since nakalagay naman na dito kung ano talaga yung main uh, contribution niya when it comes to learning, okay, uh, he contributed the idea of organizer, okay, advanced organizer. So, I think we are all familiar naman sa pag-organize ng mga uh, concepts. Okay. So, to give you the uh, preview of Osobel's subsumption theory, or meaningful verbal learning ni David Paul Osobel. Okay, ito yan sila. So, there are meaningful perception of information, okay, and that uh, goes down to the learner's cognitive structure, use of advanced graphic organizer, and subsumption. Um, we also are going to talk, talk about the four processes for meaningful learning, okay, which include derivative subsumption, correlative correlative subsumption, superordinate learning, and combinatorial learning. And lastly, for advanced organizers, we are going to look at the expository narrative scheming and graphic organizers. So ano ba yung focus ni uh, Osibel sa kanya theory of subsumption? So important factors influencing learning according to him are quantity, yung dami, how much you can uh, actually gain or acquire clarity gaano siya uh, clear okay gaano siya kaliwanag para sa isang estudyante o para sa isang learner and of course organization of the learner's present knowledge how how you are actually um, um organizing or paano mo siya isinisino sa iyong sa iyong isip okay so Let's talk more about the cognitive structure. Okay? Pag sinabi natin co cognitive structure, it's just like yung PJ schema. Ganon. So it, it includes facts, concepts, propositions, raw perceptual data and theories. Right? So moving forward, 
So meaningful learning takes place when an idea to be learned is related to some sensible way to ideas that is that the learner already possess. Sabi natin, di ba, na, na tututo tayo kapag yung isang idea o yung isang konsepto ay sa tingin natin merong relevance sa atin. Ba? Hindi mo naman masyadong pinagpapapansin kapag hindi ka naman masyadong nakakarelate o hindi kailangan sa'yo. So for example, ngayon, you are majoring in uh, education. So pali, um, ang iyong course is nasa education. So of course, lahat ng... Um, courses about education, yun lang yung may idea ka. You do not care about engineering. Pero okay lang din naman. But your focus is more on kung saan yung focus mo ngayon, kolehyo ka. Another, before new material can be presented effectively, the student's cognitive structure must be strengthened. Again, that's why we have the idea of rehearsal. Kailangan dapat kapag may review tayo, alam nyo kung ano yung mga tinatalakay natin when we talk about PJ alam mo cognitive development siya yan so it's all about schema yung ganun mas matatag sana yung foundation para kapag sinabi yung ganitong konsepto alam mo na agad di ba when we talk about modeling alam mo si Bandura yan okay moving on we have advanced organizer so pag sinabing advanced organizer also bell yan okay so also bell So, the way to strengthen students' cognitive structure is by doing advanced organizers, sabi ni Osobel. Because this will allow students to already have a bird's eye. Kasi di ba kapag merong image na, na gagawa yung isang estudyante o yung isang learner, okay? you can actually see um, yung mga uh, sanga-sanga nung, nung concept. Diba? You can break down ideas, you can break down theories, you can break down information okay? by by analyzing ano ba yung uh, general idea nitong topic na. Okay? So yun yung idea ni Osobel. Okay? So advanced organizers or subsumption, okay? the, the term subsumption is Osobel. So pag narinig nyo na yung salitang subsumption, ah, Osobel to, meaningful uh, verbal learning theory or subsumption. Pag sinabi natin subsumption, this is now the process by which new material is related to relevant ideas in the existing cognitive structure. So, paano siya naging related? Okay? Paano siya relevant or paano siya significant dun sa, sa cognitive structure na nabuo? So, it's a process. So, that's subsumption. Okay? And there are four processes for meaningful learning, such as derivative subsumption, correlative subsumption, superordinate learning, and combinatorial learning. So let's first look at derivative subsumption. Okay, ano nga ba ang derivative subsumption? So when we talk about derivative subsumption, this describes a situation in which the new information you learn is an example of a concept that you have already learned. Okay, so more on, uh, paano mo siya i-connect doon sa previous knowledge or prior knowledge mo? May pagkakahawig siya doon kay PJ kasi kay PJ parang yung higher uh, order of thinking habang tumatanda ang isang bata, parang lumalawak din yung pangunawa niya. So example ng derivative subsumption is like this. So for example daw, you have already acquired the basic concept of a bird. Okay, yung bird na ibon ha hindi yung kung ano man na iniisip mo. Okay? So bird, the animal bird, the one that flies. So you know that a bird has feathers, okay? beak and lay eggs. Alam mo na ito ay hindi mamal. Okay? So bird, okay? lumilipad po na bird. Ano? Malisyoso. Now you learn about a kind of bird that you have never seen before. So for example lang, alam mo lang na bird dati ay eagle o kaya maya. Now, uh, you are introduced to a different type of bird by your teacher. You know, guys, I will introduce you. Uh, this kind of bird is like this and like that. And so let's say a blue jay that conforms to your previous um, knowledge. So ito is derivative subsumption. So from your previous learning, lumawak yung kaalaman mo, kaisipan mo about a specific or a general knowledge or concept. 
Next, correl correlative subsumption. So, correlate. So, ibig sabihin niyan is ano yung connection. No? So, palalawakin. So, it enriches the higher level concept. Example daw is you see a new kind of bird that has already um that has a really big body and long strong legs. So it doesn't fly but it can run fast. Nasa category pa rin siya ng bird kasi dati ang idea mo about bird is lumilipad. Ngayon sa correlative subsumption is that merong exemption. So hindi pa lahat ng bird lumilipad. Oo nga naman, di ba? Hindi lahat ng bird lumilipad at maaaring mas malawak na yung kaalaman mo about bird ngayon kasi hindi naman lahat ng bird lumilipad, hindi lahat ng bird may pakpak, o di ba? So, at this time, you now know that a bird that has a big body and strong legs and it does not fly but can run fast is what type of bird? O yan, so tama. So, you may now include your concept of an ostrich to your previous concept of what bird is. No. Okay, next. Superordinate learning. So, superordinate learning naman is that you already knew a lot of examples of the concept but did not know the concept itself until it was taught. Okay, so ngayon, kailangan mo ng uh, other person. Kasi hindi yung kaya ng sariling pangunawa. So you need uh, to have a teacher or someone who can teach you um, better or for you to realize na, ah, ito pala yan. Ano ba example daw nito? So a child was well acquainted with banana, mango, guava, etc. So basically these are all frutas, fruits. But the child did not know until she was taught that these were all examples of fruits. So, Dati yung bata, iiwanan lang sa lamesa ng nanay. Okay? Laging merong mga prutas sa lamesa. Okay. So ngayon, yung bata, na-condition siya na every time mapupunta siya sa mesa is meron siyang kakainin. Pero kumakain lang siya. He doesn't really care. Ano ba yun? Okay? So nung uh, nagkaroon ng pagkakataon, si mother, for example, or the caregiver, Okay. You know what? These are all kinds of fruits. So, ganun. so that's super ordinate learning. Ngayon, alam na nung bata, ah, lahat pala ng ideas na sinasabi sa akin, it is about ganito. O, sa, lahat pala ng ano, lahat pala nung nandun sa lamesa namin ay prutas. Ganun pala yun. And as you go uh, further, as you go through uh, your higher learning, Diba? Tsaka mo lang na-realize na lahat pala ng pinag-usapan about ganito. Kapag pala pinag-usapan natin ang uh, addition, multiplication, division, math pala yung tinutukoy natin doon. These are all pala um, parts of mathematics. So kapag uh, ito pala lahat ng konsepto pa lang ko, it talks about ganitong subject yun. Nasisinop-sinop mo na siya. Yan. Next, combinatorial learning. So from the word combination. Okay, combinatorial learning is when newly acquired knowledge combines with prior knowledge to enrich the understanding of both concepts. So for example, to teach someone about how plants breathe, you might relate it to previously acquired knowledge of human respiration. So for example, para siyang may analysis, uh, uh, analogy. Ba? Example, um, ituturo mo yung respiration. Respiration is about... Um, breathing, ba? how uh, a person inhales, exhales uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Diba? Ganyan. So, itinuro sa'yo yung konsepto ng respiration sa tao. Ngayon, if you're going to introduce respiration sa halaman, i-relate mo siya ngayon doon sa kung paano ang proseso ng respiration sa tao. So, para mas madali nang maipasa yung knowledge doon sa uh, respiration ng Halaman. Kasi it's just the same thing. Parang ganun. Yeah. So because they are both living things, they have the same process. Pero, of course, meron siyang iba't ibang proseso. So for example, sa halaman, wala namang ilong yan. So saan saan yung part na uh, napaprocess o saan nang nag, nag take place yung respiration? O yun naman na yung ituturo mong concept. Ganun. Okay? So, looking at the advanced organizer, this is a major instructional tool proposed by David Osmond. So, 
uh, kapag meron tayong mga features na ang mas gusto is you know concept mapping, conceptual design, yung framework yet. Ang idea niyan, ang proponent niyan ay si David Paul Osubel. Okay? Kasi mas maganda nga namang tingnan ano yung picture, you know, visual imagery. Pag nandoon na lahat ng concepts, ah, kahit hindi ka na magbasa, kahit hindi ka na maglagay ng detalye, nagigets mo na kasi may mga kapupunta-puntahan na yung um, main idea. So what are the benefits of advanced organizer according to Osabel? Of course, first is you will find it easier to connect new information with what you already know about the topic. And another, you can readily see how concept in a certain topic is related to each other. Mas madali siyang tingnan, di ba? Kapag nagtitingin ka ng graphic organizer or cognitive map, for example, nakikita mo kung ano yung iikutan ng topic natin ngayon. Okay? So what are the types of advanced organizers? Number one is expository. Pag sinabing expository, so expose, you describe the new content. Narrative, narration. So it presents the new information in the form of a story to students. So mga uh, form of story, mga pakwento-kwento, ganyan, that's narrative. Skimming is done by looking over the new material to gain a basic overview. Okay? Skimming. So, uh, new material to gain a basic overview. And then, graphic organizer, visuals to set up or outline the new information. And this may include pictographs, descriptive patterns, concept patterns, and concept maps. So, ito yung pinaka-highlight ng uh, tool na proposed ni uh, David Osobel. So, graphic organizer, usually ginagamit ito as um, instructional materials ng teachers. Okay? Para mas maipakita ng mas madali dun sa bata. Okay, yung topic. So, let me give you an example. For example of a pictograph. Ayan. So, pictograph sa halip na uh, ikwento in a narrative form, di ba? Ikukwento mo, ano, you know, there are types of like this, like that, ayan, sa isang um, bakery. Mas magandang ipakita mo siya sa um, pictograph. Okay? So, there are, of course, different types here ng pagkain, di ba? Also, for example, types ng donut, di ba? Or ano bang tawag dito? These are um, the pamimili at your options, di ba? So, ano ba yung mga nakaprepared natin sa mga different types ng donut? So, we have the sprinkled, custard, original chocolate, frosting, and jelly. Okay? So, and we have here um, yung number of donuts. Yan. So, kapag isang ring daw, it is equivalent to two donuts. So, di mas madali nga naman siya um, maipakita. Yeah. So in this way integrated na yung um yung selections ano ba yung mga different types ng donuts tapos kung ilan, di ba? Nang hindi masyadong masyadong information overload kasi kapag pinakitaan mo yung estudyante o yung learner ng um word problem, mas mahirap siyang unawain. Pero kapag naka-pictograph siya, mas madali siyang maunawaan, di ba? And Yung may legend ka dyan na kapag isang buong donut, it means there are two. So, ang count mo per donut dyan is two. Di kapag ilalagay na natin siya sa numerical value. So, madali na siya may lalagay. Okay? And then, you will have, the, of course, the problem. So, how many uh, jellies, for example? non Okay, next po. So, descriptive organizer. Descriptive organizer naman. Descriptive pattern organizer is um, yung mas uh, simplified. So, example kanina, we have farm animals. So, what are the different types of farm animals that you know? So, horse, chicken, pig, sheep, goat, cow. And you can actually expand this kapag mas madami pang idea. 
So, alam ng bata na lahat ng examples sa binigay nila, they fall under the category of farm animals. You know? So, para mas nahihiwala yung idea na, ah, meron din palang mga domestic animals. Yung domestic animals naman, these are the animals that you pet at home. No? So, at least may idea na sila kung paano paghihiwahiwala yung mga ideas. Another is a concept pattern organizer. So, concept pattern organizer Um, we have here, for example, insects. That's the main idea. So insects, okay, you're going to um, divide it into uh, concepts. So pag sinabi natin insects, it's a three-body section. Okay, so hihiwalayin natin. What are the three-body sections? So it has head, thorax, and abdomen. And then another concept about insects is it is that it has one or two pairs of wings. May ganun pala. So, ano yung example no? Bibigay. Another, one pair of antenna. Okay? So, another, it has six legs. No. So, at least, sa isang concept pattern organizer, nandun, di ba? Nabuo lahat yung idea and concept about insects. Another, concept maps. Ayan. So, concept maps naman, ayan, um, these are mas malawak. So, how can I use? And lahat ng mga uh, possible ideas that talks about the main idea is mailalagay natin. So, how do we apply these Osobel's principles? So, the most general ideas of a subject should be presented first and then progressively differentiated in terms of detail and specificity. He called this progressive differentiation. Okay. So, dapat daw lahat muna ng idea i-present. Okay. Kapag maliwanag na, and then that's the time that we can differentiate them. Okay. The purpose of progressive differentiation is to increase the stability and clarity of anchoring. Okay, so, mas klaro, mas alam ng bata na, ah, hindi, magkakaiba pala yan. So, dapat paghiwahiwalayin. So, alam yung paghiwahiwalayin sa pagsasama-samain. O lahat ba to related? Ano? And then, instructional materials should attempt to integrate new materials with previously presented information through comparisons. It's very important for you to always ask, how is it, how is it the same and how is it different? para nandun yung idea ng bata kung paano niya na-relate yung mga ideas or concepts sa isa't isa o meron ba itong pagkakaiba-iba at hindi siya related uh, at all. So that's actually higher order, order thinking um, na napapractice natin yung pag-iisip ng mas malalim, mas ra rational, mas logical ang isang learner. So, just to sum up what we have ta uh, talked about, also Bell's um, meaningful verbal learning or subsumption theory. So, it's more about uh, visual image. Okay? So, advanced organizers. So, lagi niyong tandaan ano yung mga konsepto ni also Bell, advanced organizer, subsumption. So, it's more about organizing ideas and concepts through visual imagery. So thank you very much. And again, if you have any clarifications or questions, you may use our uh, group chat okay, or you may message me directly so I can attend to that. So thank you very much and God bless us all.